Three. <laughs> 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 All right, we're in, everybody. Hey! hey! Goons, gaggle, friends, Romans. I don't know where I'm going with this. Welcome! Mm -hmm. Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome <laughs> to the season one premiere of Goon Files. <laughs> I am Ned, and I will be your handler. Hello. Hello. Around me are four me, Daddy. lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't take long to get those comments going. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, around me are four lovely, lovely people that you all know. Uh, for those just joining us, though, uh, let's let's go around the horn and just talk about who we are. Yeah, Campbell. <laughs> What? <laughs> we are 30 seconds into the stream. <laughs> hey, what happened? Uh, if you look in the chat, you hashtag <laughs> hashtag <laughs> handle <laughs> daddy. This is not our okay. <laughs> Where's the Wait, did you, Ned? Did you just call on someone to introduce them? No, 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 no. Where's the hashtag though? Hashtag. <laughs> It's Hand, the hashtag <laughs> handle me, Daddy. It's good for you. <laughs> oh God! Just uh, you know, just uh, as normal. I'm I'm about thirty seconds behind on the technological end here. Um, <laughs> no, let's start with uh, let's start with the resident Twitch witch, uh, Miss K. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, friends. I'm the resident Twitch witch. Uh, <laughs> my name is K. And um and are we guys? Is our brand horny? Is that just our brand now? <laughs> hey, see, the thing is, I think our brand—it's integral. We're yeah. trying. To, I think we're gently trying to move into a hornier space <laughs> in our in our thirties. We started off, I think, in a really sweet and wholesome space, and I think yeah, we, yeah. we challenge ourselves. I think we're definitely pushing those boundaries. That's for sure. We really are. We're just we're, we're just working our way through like MPAA ratings. We started with G, then PG, uh -huh. now PG thirteen. Now we're just starting to get into that R and C seventeen. As Gower well, says. Is wholesome horny, which I think is actually a pretty perfect. <gasps> oh, that's uh, our alignment. Of us. That's, 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 that's our great. D and D alignment is wholesome <laughs> horny. Is that's wholesome great. horny. <laughs> Speaking of uh, going from PG to NC seventeen, Cam, you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> Me? Yeah, yeah. As the I'm... engine behind that movement. <laughs> yeah. I, I am. It is true that I'm. I, I am trying to push things in a hornier manner. As the one, as the one who has played an eleven-year-old for now a year and a half. Like it's it's time. <laughs> I'm I'm going through puberty. I'm Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else you need to know? No. <laughs> Oh, I think we got a pretty good picture. <laughs> I think that I think that covered all the bases. Great. Um, Trevor, how about you, buddy? Well, hello, everybody. I am Trevor William Fail, the critical fail DM, and I am so excited to be in a, a player chair this evening. I think it'll be a, a rowdy, howdy, hoedown for all involved. <laughs> oh, oh, love no. the hat, my man. Love the hat. Yeah! That's... My, that's... <laughs> Are we going to get a room full of new dialects? <laughs> we, we might. Know. We damn well might. Right. And last, but certainly not least, in any way, shape, or form, Ty, how about you give a shout out on the horn there? Uh, yeah. Tyler Canner, uh, brewer and wannabe actor. What's <laughs> up? <laughs> I love that. Not wannabe <laughs> anymore, baby. You I love everything love. about that. I, Tyler, I spoke to all the other actors. We'd love to have you. Yes. <laughs> yes. I made it. Yeah. Uh, we needed to tell you, Ty, uh, you got the job. <laughs> It's uh, true. And, Asgar uh, agrees. Asgar says, you are an actor. No wannabes here. Absolutely. And Go, Go birds! birds. Go birds. <laughs> yes. Go birds. Actor, brewer, Eagles fan. <laughs> Philadelphian. Yeah. So allow me to uh, uh, allow me to bring us in here. I'm just gonna take the shades off for a minute. Ooh, uh -oh. So what what is let me ask you this? What is everybody's first impression when I told you guys that we were going to be playing Delta Green, what was the what was the first thing that really kind of came to your mind when I said when I said we're gonna we're gonna sit down we're gonna play Delta Green? I thought, oh no, because it feels you you had a specific interest in me playing a specific kind of character that I felt would be really challenging, and I was like. I'm going to have to learn too much shit. There's no way I can become an expert 
in all the things <laughs> that I need to become an expert in before we start this campaign. But I actually think that that's a really good place to be is like, I'm not an expert. I don't know everything, but we're just going to figure it out along the way. And we can listen. If it's, if it's interesting, then it doesn't have to be correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly it. That's exactly it. Kay, I know you have... A, a little exposure to Delta Green, but what? A little, yeah. What? Uh, what, what was going through your mind when when you were going to sit in a in an agent chair? Uh, I think. Well, my thoughts my thoughts were mostly, uh oh, Ned has decided <laughs> that there's not there has not been enough death in any of our content, so let's play Delta Green. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> have you been reading my memoirs? <laughs> you left them on the coffee table. What am I supposed yeah. to do? Ah, shoot. Um, <laughs> Tyler, you too, man. You've, you've, you've listened to uh, some Delta green. You kind of have a little bit of exposure with it. What, what are you, uh, what was your first impression when I was like, this is kind of where I want you to go. This is what I want you to do. Pretty similar to K. Oh God, Ned's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Do I really come across this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, I get no mostly, respect, I tell you. No respect. Mostly just because you, in, in when you're a player, you have tried to die in like every single one of our campaigns. <laughs> it is very true. I do find I do find mortality and death very interesting. I think that uh, in playing an RPG or a tabletop game, that is something that we don't always experience, right? Is the death of this character that you're playing or the death of a loved one or the death of death of somebody that's really important to the story. Uh, and I, I think that that's a very vital point. You know, it's not just the enemies that die. It's not just the bad guys that die. Um, well, Trevor, what do you, what about you, bud? I don't know. I, I was not familiar with this system. I mean, uh, I uh, I knew the premise of it. It was sort of like X Files y ish, mm -hmm. but I had never, I had never, I don't even have that much experience with the X Files. I do, however, love the Dresden Files. So I feel like we're <laughs> kind of along the same space. <laughs> yeah. Also, we've been watching a lot of Supernatural, and mm -hmm. uh, so the sort of like paranormal investigator kind of shtick is 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 certainly in the in the zeitgeist right now. So I'm very excited. Let's get weird. Or, yeah. as, or as we like to call it, Super Boys. Yeah, I call it Super Boys. <laughs> <laughs> you want to watch Super Boys? <laughs> I said, babe, you want to watch Super Boys? <laughs> That's very funny. I like that. I like that a lot. I'm, well, just, I'm, a, little, we... I'm a little nervous for, for how right. it's going to feel when someone else asks me to roll a sanity check. Oh, um, God. I'm going to be like, That's my job. Do not That's quote the old thing. magics to me, witch. Oh, but you're the, you're the Twitch witch. You, surely you'll pass them all. Oh. I was there when they were written. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Kay, not even God himself could kill you. You'll be fine. <laughs> yep. Invulnerable. <laughs> with that, with that, my dear gaggle and friends and everybody that's here, I want to read to you something that's right out of the player's handbook. Oh, yeah. shit. And this is what's going to, I hope this, this will be our moment that immerses you in where we're going here. Wait, before you do that, Ned. Yes. Kay, are you recording? I have been recording this whole time and you know it, Gamble. You rock. Rub it right in, why don't you? I thought you were Friends. about to compliment me for that nice music cue. <gasps> oh, but I, I do love the you. bouncing techno. That is that is the vibe. That is definitely the vibe. Hey, that was a sick music cue. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now take Del it away. Delta Green is not about guns. Delta Green is not about a bug hunt. Delta Green is not about understanding anything. Delta Green is about the end. The end of everything. Your family, everyone you know, your country, all life on Earth. It's about the end of everything and your place in it. Because you'll end too. That's what the fear in this game is all about. That's what the game is about. It's not about winning, and it's not about your advancement, and it's not about the best weapon and how much damage you do, or the most clever plan. Delta Green is about the end of everything, and how much of it you'll live to see. And with that, I bid you well. Uh. <laughs> We're going to jump right in. Everybody watching, I've had our players start to build their characters. They have a 
they have a glimpse, an idea of what this character is going to become. Um, they have the age. They have what they look like. They know where they're from. They know even what their class is or what uh, what part of the government they'll be a part of in this. Um, the main thing that we need to get to is the crunchy stuff, the nitty gritty stuff. So I'm going to go one person at a time and we're going to go to the sheets and we're going to make sure that you guys got your skills right. And then very uh, exciting. I'm going to ask each of the players whether they would like to take the standard allotted point value for their uh, attributes or whether they would like to roll it live and keep what they get. The option's theirs. So we'll see what happens. Kay, oh, why God. don't we start with you? <laughs> why don't we? <laughs> I could think of a couple reasons. Okay. Um, you know, you know, I have been like hemming and hawing over this for at least a week because you've told us for a little while that we can choose whether we want to do like the point by or the yeah. rolling. <sighs> I don't have a lot of faith in my roles. <laughs> But I also don't have a lot of faith in my ability to quickly make a decision. Mm. So I'm kind of thinking I'm going to go with the rolls. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So so you know how this goes. It's 46. Drop the lowest. And uh, you go. I, I, I will give you a little bit of leniency. I will say that the rolls that you make, you can put in any attribute that you want. Okay, so, so I can like... be right down the line. However, you have to keep the numbers you get. Okay, so I'll just, I'll roll X amount of times and then uh, put them to certain attributes. Yeah. Basically, God, it is so dark. I can't tell which die is a six. There we go. There's a D6. There's another one. <laughs> okay. All right, let's start with my first one. So I'm just going to roll 3D6, or 4D6, sorry. Roll 4D6, yep. and I'm going to drop the lowest, and we find one more D6. There we go. And uh, yeah, here goes nothing. Here we go. Use my tray here. Okay. I'm first so roll. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. This is good. Uh, that's going to be uh, 13. Not bad. That's Not a good bad. one. There you that go. Might just, that might just be my, like, my my primary stat, whatever I decide to make that. Good stuff. Um, good stuff. Remind me how many I've had, how many I'm doing this for strength, con, dex, intelligence, power, and charisma. So That's six times correct. total. Okay. Yes, the six of them. Mm -hmm. Number two. Uh okay. Again, not awful. Um 12. Oh not hell awful, yeah. actually pretty darn good. Yeah. Okay, this is looking really good. Yeah, okay, okay. I love oh. this. All right, roll number three. What what was that about God himself? Uh, yeah. <laughs> roll number three. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. Uh, the first one I saw was a six, which, you know, great. The other three were ones. So at least I get to drop Oh my those. gosh. So that's an All eight right. total. An eight. We, got, we got our yeah. first below average. Mm -hmm. But that's fine. No one's mm -hmm. perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another pretty decent one. Actually, pretty darn good. That's uh, 12 again. We got another 12. Great. Very good. Two more. Okay, a nine. So, you know, another kind of below average one. Last one. Last one, we're going to be rocking a, uh, a six and 11. Great. Nice. Okay, those are actually red. really good it's rolls. Red. That's, yeah, that's a good thread. To give, the, uh, to give the, the audience a little bit of an idea, 10 <laughs> is kind of the benchmark. If you had 10s all the way down the line, you would be your average Joe Schmo, so to speak. Anything above a 10 is good. Anything below a 10 is a weakness. Maybe you're out of shape. You know, maybe you broke an ankle somewhere down the line, and that's why your strength isn't that high. Or, you know, maybe you, you have stage fright. Maybe that's why your charisma isn't the way that it, it should be. But, hey, what? talk to me. What, where are you going to put those points? Okay. As, well, I'm going to do it as soon as I can figure out how I can edit. Oh, that's set to view only. That's why. I'm looking at the wrong one. All right, hold on. I'm going to set. All right, my, my highest stat, I'm going to put the 13 in intelligence. I think that's mm -hmm. a good call. That's a good call. Um, Absolutely. I'm going to put my first of two 12s into power. And I'm going to put my okay. second 12 into... Oh... I'm going to go with dexterity. So that's 13, 12, and 12. Now I'm going to put my 11. 
I'm going to put that in... Tough call. It is a tough call. It is a tough yeah. call. I'm gonna put that in Constitution. Let's go with Constitution for that. Okay. Alrighty. I think that's. Uh, I think that's fair. Yeah. Always a safe bet. And now I've got my eight and my nine. Um, I'm gonna dump strength. That'll be my eight. And I'm gonna put the nine into charisma. Okay. Remind me. What do you have in power? My power is a twelve. Okay. That's. It's good. All right. <laughs> so with that, we can calculate your HP right out of the gate. So Lovely. your strength and your constitution added 19. together, divided by two. Do I round up or down? You round up. I round up. Okay. So that's going to be 10. Great. So your HP is 10 hit points. Excellent. Ned, we have a question in the chat from Biggs Jasper 13. What's the difference between power and strength? Ooh, I'm so glad you asked. Power is more so your willpower and your mental power than it is your actual physical power. Strength, just like in D&D or in Pathfinder, is still your determining attribute for when it comes to how strong your character is. But because we're working in a play setting where you're going to be having sanity rolls and your mental stability is going to be in check, power refers to mental and your will, will to keep going. Great question. Great, great question. K, uh, your willpower is your power score. Okay. So that's going to be a 12. Right. And now for the fun part, your sanity. Oh, boy. Your sanity <laughs> is your power times five. S power times five. Okay. Uh, so 60. Yes. So you have 60 sanity starting out of the game. Not nice. bad at all. Very good place to be. Okay. From there, why don't we move on to Campbell? Ready now. <laughs> I have for, for comfort. I also I have my uh Ooh. my sweetie character sheet. Very just, nice. Just here to have. Very nice. Sweetie's remember, watching over you. She's, she's, she's still watching. alive. So she is. She's still kicking it. She's still kicking it. Um. Okay. Talk to me. Are we rolling the dice? Or are we taking the 72 and splitting them around? I think in the spirit of Daphne, she would roll the dice. I think I she would risk it. Couldn't all. agree more yes. with you. I think that's, I think yes. that's how you got to do it. Mm -hmm. All right. I got your cigs while you do this. <laughs> that's right. And my huge coffee. I need my huge coffee and my cigarettes. Yes. All right. So I'm rolling 4d6 and dropping the lowest. That's correct. All right. So that is seven, eight, nine. That's 13. That's not bad at all. Oh, wait, wait. If I drop, wait, drop the lowest. So that's drop the lowest is 11. Still good. Okay. 11. All right. Eh, oh, no. A D4. It's gone forever. Get that D4 out of there. It's That's gone, gone forever. forever. You'll All never right. see it again. Until it you step on it. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Holy shit. I rolled three sixes and a five. That's okay. an 18, Cam. All right. So that, okay, we got one. Wow. Eight. Wow. Oh, shit. I think I know what All stat right. that's going. We're going to be safe. That's our goal. <laughs> We're going to be safe. We're going to make go. it, you guys. We're going to make it. <laughs> All right. So that's well, four, at least four, Campbell's five. Gonna make it. Yeah, well, <laughs> one of you will make it. Four, yeah. Four, four, five, nine. No, forever, kid. That one is 13. Yep. If drop the lowest. Okay. Eh. <laughs> Eight, nine. 10. Okay, so that's a 10. Good. How many of these am I rolling? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6? Yep, 6 in All total. Right, so that so was four. 4. Yep. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eek. Mm -hmm. Is that for real? For real? Yep. <laughs> 6, yep. Seven, 8. That's an 8. All right. <laughs> for real? <laughs> All right, and then the last one. Oh, that sounds so nice. Okay, okay. Okay, great, great, great. All right, drop that one. 10, 11, 12. Okay. Okay, so you only have one... 
bad one. You only have, have an eight. I have one super bad one. Yeah. And everything else is chill. And the 10 and the, the 10 and the 11 are better than being under 10. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Campbell in 18. Listen. Holy heck. <laughs> and this is why sometimes there's a benefit to rolling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now I ask Campbell or Campbell, where <laughs> are you going to put that 18? Okay, listen. <laughs> I'm trying to decide. So I think that her con is high. I think her power is high. And I do think her charisma is high. But I'm inclined to just put it in power. Yeah. I'm inclined to go power. You can't go wrong. Can't go wrong in power. What were you? But but Ned, you were like, I think I know where that's going. Where did you think I was going to put it? Oh, I... I really well, can't I just, say. I just couldn't say. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. No, I think I, I think you would be smart to put it in power or intelligence. I think it would benefit you in either way. Interesting. Um, I don't think I think intelligence is actually like maybe going to be on on the lower end for me. OK, fair um, enough. OK, so that's an 18 in power. Next highest is a 13. And I'm going to put that in. I'm thinking about charisma kind of the way that I think about charisma in our other TTRPGs, which has to do with like social capital. Absolutely. And so I think she has high charisma. All right. Because she's in a position of, of power. Mm-hmm. Um, the next one is a 12, and I'm going to put that in Constitution because okay. I've, all I've been doing is smoking and drinking coffee, and now I'm made of iron. Yes, that sounds... Um, <laughs> wow. I, uh, I take personal offense to that comment. Go ahead. <laughs> and then I'm going to put... Hmm, I'm going to put that 11 in intelligence. I'm going to put that 10 in strength. And I'm going to put that 8 in text. Okay. So, so the is eight gonna, is going to go into your dex. Is that going to ad- bite me? Well, uh, your dexterity is described as your agility, your coordination, and your nimbleness. I'm not tremendously nimble. I'm kind of depending on my ability to fire a gun. Fair and enough. And talk my way out of shit. Fair enough. Great. So let's go down. Now that you have your stats, <laughs> let's go to uh, your HP, which is your strength plus your con. Mm-hmm. Divided Straight. by two. Plus con divided by two. Hold on. I don't want to do live math. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you guys signed up for some live math, because that's where we're headed. Get All out right. your calculators, nerds. <laughs> nerds. All right, so I have 11 HP. Okay, great. Um, it's more than I had in uh, more than I had in uh, Madison Mercy. It is. And I lived then. All your right. Willpower is equal to your power. Okay. Your Just sanity as, as is eighteen. Eighteen. Yep. Your sanity is your power times five. Wow. It's powerful, yeah. Powder you sugar. Have <laughs> sense, and you can withstand it, which is yep. which makes sense for your character background, which we'll get into very shortly. And then um, and then your breaking point, which K, I'm gonna give you this too. Your breaking point is your sanity minus your power. Okay. That's Mine's your breaking point. So if you lose that much sanity, if you reach your breaking point in a session, something bad's going to happen. So you <gasps> sanity what minus happen, power? Man? Sanity <laughs> minus power is your breaking point. Okay. Great, great. Will we forget our keys, lock ourselves out of our apartment? Oh, <laughs> if only it like were that, that simple. If only it were that easy. <laughs> great, Cam. She's uh great. she's she's really she's really good. Cool go. Trevi, you ready? Oh I'm ready. You know I'm gonna roll, brother. Alright, here we go. You know I'm gonna roll, brother. Oh boy. Move over, craps table. Here comes Trevor. I got my wooden die going on that. Oh. Ha. Ooh, it's bad. Oh, it's bad. <laughs> oh, it's bad. Oh, it's bad. Oh, oh it's that's bad. the reversal there, Trev. Oh, it's bad. Uh that's uh-oh. Just, uh fuck. That's seven. All right. Whoa. Seven. 
Seven. Alrighty. That's my first one. Okay. All right. Uh, Where's my fiddler? Oh, that's a good one, though. That's 16. 16. All right, wow. buddy. 16. And. Hot damn, another 16. Nice. Hot damn. Wow. Hot damn. Wow. Is it me or is it getting brighter in here? I think I got to put these shades <laughs> on. Okay, that's a that's a nine. Okay, well, the I'm gonna be. I'm gonna nice... be. I think I'm gonna. It's all gonna come out in the wash for your for your buddy here for your boy the critical fail DM. Jesus, I sw- okay. It's another sixteen. Oh my god! Wow, three one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Okay, what's the probability on that? Oh, don't ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> it's one over six times a lot. Ah! <laughs> However many times he's rolled a d six. Ah, I got a six. Oh, oh, oh no! Oh shit! <laughs> wow, we got a real munchkin on our hands. You're you're min maxing right, your so way. You got to... three sixteens. <laughs> I got three sixteens, a nine, a seven, and a six. <laughs> <laughs> that is so right on for your guy. He's just an expert at some things, and then has also not seen the light of day in a minute. Okay, all right. Super specialized. Okay, I do have okay. to say that Modern Artifice, one of our sponsors in the chat, just went, <gasps> yes! And then he said, I mean, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking well, that of, was a real viral laugh. That was that was crazy, Trev. But speaking of Modern Artifice, Campbell, would you like <gasps> to talk about our sponsor for a minute? Oh, Whoa. boy, do I. Let me hit you with Sponsorships Corner over here. Woo! So this stream is brought to you by our sponsor, Modern Artifice, maker of fine nerdy novelties and glorious hollow metal dice and, and also normal dice. But I mean, look at that. Oh, they make this, is, this is my favorite now. Modern Artifice die. Look at this. Look at that beauty. Mm-hmm. They're so freaking cool, man. They have sweet promotions running on their Etsy page all the time that include random mystery metal dice sets for $19.99, which I have taken them up on many times now. <laughs> I think you're the their number one buyer of that camp. <laughs> I have been doing that a lot. I like to roll the dice. And then tonight, we are going to be doing a giveaway of a very, very special like one of a kind modern artifice dice. Shall I show it now, Ned? You absolutely can. Give the people oh, a little well. Give me a taste. Give the people a glimpse. Give the people Give a, a glimpse. Okay. Like a quick, a, a quick a dice roll. Whoa! Okay, all right, all right, all right. We'll get so, better details on it in a little while. dice roll. The dice roll. <laughs> so stick around until the break um, where we'll give you the code to pop in the chat for the chance to win that super special modern artifice piece. Um, anything else, Ned, that you want me to shout out? Shall I shout out our Patreon while I have the floor? Please do, absolutely. If you are into what we do and you want behind the scenes stuff along the way from this campaign, because we don't know where this is camp- this campaign could go on forever for all we know. <laughs> and, and we love to post like insider backstories and GM notes and things like that. If I Trevor took a video of me tonight working on my dialect before we went on stream, that's going to become patreon content um our patreon is patreon.com slash critical fail dm you get a ton when you join at the first level which is five dollars a month um you get a whole other podcast goon talk about our curse of stride campaign so yeah patreon.com slash critical fail dm back to you handler (laughs) thank you so much um Trev, you got your stats. Yeah, I can't decide uh, where that nine is going to go. It's either... (laughs) So, clearly, six is going in intelligence. Okay. Seven is going in charisma. Okay. Starting to paint a picture of this uh, this guy. Um, (laughs) I'm laughing because I I know where he's from, and I I know what he's into, and it's it's all making sense. (laughs) I think I have to go... Uh, all right, I think I gotta do it. okay. So I'm gonna do 16. One of my 16s in strength, one of my 16s in constitution, and one of my 16s in power. And then I'll put my nine in dexterity. So here we go. Okay. All righty, all righty. Okay, okay. 
Um, great. So I'll go down the line with you real quick. Your HP is your strength plus your con. Divided by two. Oh, and then 16. round it up. 16. Mm-hmm. Willpower is just power. Yep. Which is also 16. Sanity your sanity point. is your power times five. Whoa, power! <laughs> oh, oh to yeah. power! I'm really trying to think of. I'm frantically trying to come up with a hashtag about Teddy being a himbo. I'm working on it. <laughs> it'll, come, it'll, come, it'll come. It'll come. It'll come naturally. <laughs> and then your breaking point, dear Trevi, is your sanity minus your power. Okay, great, 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 great. Uh, okay, great. All right, I'm good to go. Let's do this thing. <gasps> All righty. Tyler. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, Tyler! shit. <laughs> no. Well, I come back. <laughs> He's moving. We, I see him moving. Oh, there we go. There we go. Did we get him? Tyler, you there, buddy? Oh, shucks. It's begun. I'll, I'll put up. Oh, I can kind of hear you. I'll put up his. Uh, I'll put up his his placeholder. There we go. We got him. We got him. We got him. <laughs> Did you put the placeholder up? <laughs> I'll take it away. I think we got him. Tyler, we got you. Okay. Okay. Oh my god! I just saw the placeholder go up. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. I think you're there. It's you're a little laggy, but you're but you are. I see movement. Okay. Okay. Tyler. All right, because I you guys are good on my end. What do you? Okay, cool. I'm, so I don't know. If you, <laughs> Well, that's great news. So bad. maybe y'all can get it together. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, talk to me, buddy. What do you? I'm, are you? I'm thinking? gonna type it to you. <laughs> no. All right, you no. got, we got me now. Tyler, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. We can hear okay. you. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. We're good. We're good. Okay. Are you thinking points value? Or are you thinking you're gonna roll the dice? I know I should go points. <laughs> but what kind of fun is that? So I'm rolling. <laughs> <laughs> we got a table full of gamblers tonight. Oh man. <laughs> I'm trying it. to I'm gonna be the worst player of all time right here. Oh, but, no, you, got uh, this. Yeah. you don't know all that. Right. Roll them up. Roll them up. So, how many are, am I rolling? Sorry, six. Four, You're gonna roll four and you D6 take away the, four the okay. and drop the lowest. <laughs> all right. Let me pick Everybody uh, my... send send good tidings to Tyler because yeah. I, I have long gonna dice. need it. I got lots of dice, but they've all failed me at one time or another. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. 13. All right. Not bad. Okay. okay. Not even God himself will be able to kill you, Tyler. Okay. You'll be fine. Oh, God. Now you got to say that. <laughs> now I'm going to roll real bad. All right. I, as I turn my magnetic watch to the right. Yeah. Oh, come on. What is this? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Eleven. I love that okay. man so much. <laughs> You're doing gotta, good, Ty. You're doing gotta, good. Hold on. I'm, I got to keep track of these. This, this, you got a 13 uh, and an 11. 11. Okay. All right. All right. What, could, what could go wrong? Oh, so much. <laughs> so, so I told myself about parenthood. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> and the answer was the same. Oh, <laughs> so much. <laughs> okay. Another 13. See, all right, he comes in here doomy and gloomy, and now he's 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 like Omega Chad. T- Tyler, your guy's actually going to be a really well-rounded guy. That's well, awesome. Been. We'll see. That, that seems so right, like a like a dude who's like regimented and really well practiced in certain mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. One out of the box. Out of the box. Oh, oh, okay. That's a fourteen. Uh huh. Okay. This all makes sense. It keeps coming and they great. don't stop coming. <laughs> I'm getting so nervous now. I know. I know the ball's about to drop. It's Let's coming for you. Rolling, Nobody knows here. that, Tyler. Nobody knows that. <laughs> oh. oh, I know. I can't see. I can't see when I'm inside with sunglasses on. <laughs> <laughs> the commitment to the your, bit is uh, your devotion to the character. All right, that one's about where I would expect nine. 
Okay, all right. we got a nine. We all got a low we one. We got a nine. We got a nine. Right. Got you, Zinger. Now, yep. Let me toss some dice. Get rid of them. All right. All right. What you don't know is I've actually been rolling an extra dice and still only <laughs> dropping <laughs> one. <laughs> He's been rolling five dice. You dirty <laughs> dog. <laughs> okay. Well. I just rolled a four, a one, a one, and a one. Oh, so, my lord. Six. Hey, it all comes there's, down to wash me. There's my good. six, yeah. Are you saying you rolled a six and a nine? <laughs> Great. Oh. Ultimate. Oh. Tip your okay. waiters, try the veal. We're, we're, we're here every Monday at 8. Um, <laughs> great. So, so, Tyler, you've got, for your character, this is actually perfect. You've got some really solid stats that you can plug away at. Where are you going to put that 14? I think that's going power. Yeah. I think I think that would make sense. As an ex-Navy SEAL, you're going Oh! Be- there oh, you go, that, buddy. We're not supposed to give that away. Sorry. No, no. Now that, because it's great because we're actually at the end of the dice rolling. So now I was going to go through and ask you guys who you are. So Surprise. Tyler, Tyler, why don't you go ahead and tell us who you're playing? Well, I am playing David B. Kaplan, an ex-Navy SEAL who is dishonorably discharged. And I think that's all I'm going to give up right there. Awesome, buddy. Right. Awesome. Uh, Kaplan, uh, that's the last name I recognize. Is he uh, a, a little, little connection there to, to maybe Madness um, and Mercy? I don't know. We'll have to see. In the, uh... I don't know. <laughs> Get ready, Stay y'all. tuned. Critical fail. DM expanded cinematic universe is coming soon. Amazing. So, Tyler, you got that 14. You're going to put that in power. Uh, talk to me about your two 13s. I think I'm going... I think I'm going Dex and Constitution. I'm torn between Strength or Constitution, but I think Constitution would make a little more sense. What's up to you, man? uh, Yeah, because I I think, too, he'd have to be... Like, 11 is strong enough, I feel like, whereas, like, I think it makes more sense for him to be dexterous and constitutional. Great. Yeah. So we got the 13 you're going to put in con and dex, and you'll put the 11 in strength. And then you got that six and that nine. (laughs) Yeah. I think I'm going Charisma 6, Intelligence 9. I think, I think that, that sounds... Um, yeah, just I, right. kill, I, I kill shit. I don't make so friends. So K has it, the right? brain cell. Gonna... That's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> K is holding on to the brain cell for this party. Great, Ty. Your HP is your strength plus your con. Okay, hold Get... on. Go ahead. Hold your horses here. Sorry. This, uh... I love how Page close Tyler roll. got to the computer camera. <laughs> Listen. Hold on now. Yeah, wait. The, the, I'm on a laptop, and this is... <laughs> What's the... Now, hold on. How do I... Honey? Which is the D and which is the D? How, how do I get that in my readers? The dad gum. <laughs> this has been I the swear, the files. second he became a father... <laughs> all right all right I, yeah. I got all my stats set now on my sheet great so your hp uh, is your strength plus your con divided okay. by two round it up <laughs> let me break out my calculator here <laughs> i think it's all right, it's toys. It's easy. Okay, I got that. All right. No live math. No live math. Tw- 24 divided by 2 is pretty easy. I got it. 14. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that was actually it for a minute, and then I had to do the math, and then I realized that was wrong. It's not. I am breaking out my calculator there for this next humdinger. Great. So, so your HP is going to be 12. It's 11 gotcha. rounded up. You're going to have 12. Um, Ned, 24 divided by 2 is 12. 
You don't I knew that. It. I knew that. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I can't be trusted. Quick. Does All anybody right. else smell toast? <laughs> go, go, go. Cut the mic. Well, you, you saw I said 22. It's fine. Your, your willpower. <laughs> Did I mention I'm running this game? Your willpower is your power. Okay, cool. And then your sanity is your power times five. Okay. So you got a pretty solid sanity there. Oh, yeah. I'm very sane for now. Your breaking point is going to be your sanity minus your power. Okay. So to give everybody an idea, that is the absolute amount that you want to lose. That's the that is the most that you want to lose in any given session. If you hit a breaking point, bad things happen. So that loss of loss of that big number in sanity in one day. In one session. Yep. Okay. In one, one sit session. Down. Okay. Session. Does that start at zero? And then if we reach our breaking point, are we approaching it from the high end or the low end? So if you reach your breaking point, that sanity is gone. And the next breaking point so your your next say whatever your remaining sanity minus your power that's your next breaking point okay okay sense? you don't get gotcha. the sanity back you have so to we're starting in game we start at our sanity and if we make it down to our breaking point then it resets to our next breaking point okay cool correct yeah gotcha resets. and to, to anybody who's curious you can regain sanity uh, just like you can in like we did in Madness and Mercy. Uh, there's just mechanical things you have to do in game to get that sanity back. So now that we have all of those numbers crunched in, um, we're let's let's go around the horn real quick and talk about who each one of us is. So Tyler, we know who you are. K care to share. I do. So I'm going to be playing Diana Grebollo, and that's the only time I'm going to roll my R's because I'm really bad at it. Um, <laughs> Could have fooled she, me. <laughs> she is a uh, she's a, a a tough New Yorican from the Bronx, and um, and she's really good with computers. She's going to be a, uh, a, a she's a, a a black hat hacker. This is so. Just so you. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, minus minus Everything the black hat it. part, but yes, yeah. No, I, honestly, like uh, I'm reminded of something that Tyler has said about how he makes characters, which is like you sort of you, you, they're largely based on you. This is the most based on me a character has ever been. She's a mix of like me, my me for profession, my mom and my grandmother for like background and and uh, origins, um, because they're both from New York City. Um, so I really hope she doesn't die because I'll feel really bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. Well, I think we're all um, ready to throw ourselves in front of you, Kay. So. Yes. <laughs> For the record, I should just go out here and say that now, despite my Puerto Rican ancestry, I don't speak a word of Spanish, so I'm just mm. going to be faking it. <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> um, Campbell, I know you've been chomping at the bit over there. I'm not right. chomping. Who's chomping? <laughs> not me. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your character? I'm going to be playing Daphne Crook, special agent Daphne Crook of the Philadelphia field office of the Federal Bureau of Fucking Investigation. A former SRA, Satanic Ritual Abuse Task Force. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> oh, I got a shiver down my spine. <laughs> oh. And uh, and and last but certainly not least, Trevi down there. Why why don't you give us a little uh, a little a little peek and, peek behind the cowboy hat there? <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking to me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I sure was, partner. <laughs> Pardon, uh, Teddy Booker. Uh, sorry if I may just have a moment of your time. Um, my name's Teddy Booker. I like Dolly Parton and the woods. That's, that's great. There you go. Uh, that was Teddy Booker. He likes Dolly Parton and the woods. Yeehaw. Um, great. So the last thing we, we have about uh, 10 minutes left before we go on our little break. I want to go over real quick. 
the skills that each one of your classes that you've chosen is going to get. Mm. So I'm going to start with K. Mm-hmm. We agreed that you were a computer engineer, correct? Yep. Awesome. So your professional skills are going to be computer science at 60%. Comp site, 60, okay. Craft electrician at 30%. Mm-hmm. Craft mechanic at 30%. Interesting. Craft microelectronics at 40%. What was the uh, the score for mechanic? 30%. 30, and then microelectronics is 40. Mm-hmm. Your science in mathematics is 40%. Okay. Your SIG intelligence is 40%. 40. Her okay. SIG is intelligent. <laughs> and can you, can you say a little bit, Ned? Because they have SIG intelligence and Hume or intelligence. And I yes. had to look up what those were. Well, well, you looked them up. Why don't you tell us about them? <laughs> I, I just looked up enough to know which one I wanted to put my points in. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and uh, we have another question in the chat, Ned, yes. from Big Jasper. Uh, why are the skills in percents? Yes, great question. So, much like Call of Cthulhu, the dice that we will be rolling for this game is the D100. So, that is the single digit place marker die on the D10, and then the double digit marker die on the D- on the D10, which is the D100 die. So, you will be trying to get underneath your percentage, just like you do in Call of Cthulhu. By the way, I forgot to put up character art. Um, <gasps> Teddy is on screen right now. Yeah. I'll put, put, put a little idea of what. Well, yeah. I'll yeah, put little yeah. old me up in a second. Goodness gracious me. Character art by Who actually Anne. Yes, who I believe is in the chat. So who's in the chat? Oh, yeah. shout out to yeah. actually Anne. Well done. Hells yeah. Um, human intelligence is is reading behavioral patterns in humanity. So it's you kind of uh, it, it's you reading somebody's vibe. It's you telling are they lying? Are so they like hiding something? Kind of insight. Very much like insight. Mm-hmm. Sig intelligence or signal intelligence is what signal are they trying to get across? So signal intelligence is used in codes and cracking codes. Hence why the computer engineer or the computer scientist is able to look for codes, if that makes sense. So that's signal intelligence. Can that be in spoken language as well as written? Mm. Very cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. It might just come out more in your side as computer codes, but yes, it's absolutely if somebody's talking to you in code as well. I know my way around a cipher. And then choose four of these. Okay. Accounting. Bureaucracy. Foreign language. Heavy machinery. Law. Or any science or any additional craft. Or additional craft. Okay. Uh, Do you want to pick them now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I wasn't expecting to have craft mechanic, uh, but I kind of think that fits into the backstory based on what Diana's father did for a living. Um, He's a, uh, he, much like my (laughs) real life late grandfather, uh, is a cabinet maker. Um, But I think think also he's, you know, just sort of a natural tinkerer and knows his way around an automobile. So I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with heavy machinery. I'm going to say she's got some skills with heavy machinery. Um, So I'm picking, I'm picking four of those. Yeah. Yes. Your heavy Heavy machinery is at 50%. Got it. Oh, 50%. Okay, great. So then are these, um, are these like occupational skills and then I'm going to get personal skills later or is, or is this all I'm getting? Oh, okay. Occupational skills. And then you'll get to pick eight more at 20% that you want to add. Got it, add, got it, got it, got yeah, it. Yeah, you pick eight more and you add 20% to them. I see, I see. Okay. Um, like- okay. I think I'm going to go with bureaucracy for uh, backstory reasons. At 50%. 50%. Okay. 
So that's at 50. Um, she speaks Spanish. I don't know if I want to put that as an occupational or a personal skill. She's like, she's fluent. So I think, which which one would be higher? Will it be higher if I choose it as an occupational? So in the book, it says if you're at 50, you're fluent in the language. Yeah. Mm. Got it. Okay. And it would be at 50 if I picked it now? If you picked it now, it would be at 40, but you could 40. add an additional 20 to it if you wanted. Okay. I might do that. So I'm going to pick that. I'm going to pick foreign language and I'm going to say Spanish. So okay. that'll be at 40, you said? Yep. Um, you get one more. And, and then any, I think... I want to do, I think I want to do an additional science or craft, but I don't know what that is yet. Great. We'll hold off so, until you, until you decide which one it is. Yeah. So come back to me. So what, what's the score going to be on that one? Uh, whichever one you choose will be 40%. 40. Gotcha. All right, cool. You go ahead and, and move on yeah. to someone else. I'm going to put those in my sheet. Campbell. Yes. You are an FBI federal agent. I sure am. Which means that you get alertness at mm -hmm. 50%. You get bureaucracy at 40%. You get criminology at 50%. Drive at 50%. Firearms at 50%. Forensics at 30%. Your human intelligence score is 60%. For those listening, that is a really high starting score. And that's because she's an FBI agent. That was her business, eh? Your law is 30%. Uh, who needs the law? You know, just whatever. <laughs> your persuade is 50%. Your search is 50%. And your unarmed combat is 60%. Hell yeah. You are one tough woman. Yeah. What a woman. You get one more of these additional things. Mm -hmm. Accounting, computer science, a foreign language, heavy weapons, or pharmacy? I chose pharmacy for this awesome. because I feel like if I have a decent amount of forensics training, I would know if somebody was like, this person had this thing in their system. Yeah. I've learned, I, I know like the, the terms for that kind of shit. Right. And that's at 50%. Mm -hmm. Awesome sauce. So you're all set. And you'll pick your, your eight additional uh, 20 percents that you want to mm -hmm. put in. Mm -hmm. Ted Rock. Teddy, my man. That's me. I, I'm, a, I'm a heady. I'm already picked in all. I've, oh. been through, I've been through. I've been through it already here. I'm, I'm already. I'm hitting the ground running. So I'm ready I to go. I should have known the DM. The DM <laughs> to do his homework. <laughs> I, I, I came prepared. Teddy, why don't you go down the line and talk about what your, uh, what your, what your class gives you? Well, sure. So I am a park ranger. So that has given me proficiency in a certain amount of skills. And then I've already gone through selecting my additional bonus skills and adding the 20% on top of relevant skills that I am interested in. So that brings me to a total of an alertness of 70, an athletics of 60, a craft of 20, a firearms of 50, a first aid of 50, a history of 30, a law of 30, a navigate of 60, a ride of 30, a search of 60, a stealth of 30, a survival of 70, a swim of 40, and an underarm combat of 50. <laughs> awesome, man. Awesome. <laughs> and then, Tyler, last but certainly not, sleep, not least, you and I went to a very specific special operator. So special operator is essentially, for those not listening, is anything that is a, a specialized task force or known as SOCOM in the military. So Delta Company or the Navy SEALs, the Army Rangers, the Green Berets, anything like that is a special operative. But you, my friend, you are a Navy SEAL, which gets you an alertness of 50%. It gets you athletics at 60%. Demolitions of 40%. Firearms at 60%. Heavy weapons at 50%. Melee weapons at 50%. Military science, land at 60%. Navigate at 50%. Pilot, small boat at 40%. Stealth 
at 50%, survival at 60%, swim at 60%, and unarmed combat at 60%. You get one additional bonus skill that I was saving to tell you on stream. You can either get human intelligence, <laughs> search, or foreign language. <laughs> the chat is really cute right now. <laughs> <Are they> really? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I just saw it. Actually, yeah, I don't know if you meant that like tequila from the song tequila, but that's how I heard it in my head. As country roads come to a close. Tequila. Like, Take me home, country roads. Tequila. <laughs> oh, that was great. Working nine to five. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's Love great. The chat. Oh boy, we just got the whole jukebox, don't we? That was great. That was great. <laughs> so, Ty, uh, yeah, hit me with that again. Yes, it is human intelligence, foreign language, or I'm sorry, I lost it. Where the hell did it go? I'm sorry, I, I got it. I got it wrong Jody. the first. I got it wrong the first time. It's human intelligence, foreign language, or psychotherapy. Ooh, Ooh interesting. I I feel like I would have foreign language. Great. And Your it, foreign language is at 30%, and it's okay. whichever language you'd like to choose. So you know enough to ask where the bathroom is. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it would be like... I don't know something like Middle Eastern from from the back. Makes sense with your backstory, absolutely. Yeah, Arabic, Pashto. Yeah, let's. Uh, yeah, I feel like Arabic works, right? That would make sense. I think that definitely makes sense. Well, friends, do we do it? That covers all of your statistics. <laughs> the eight twenty percent. I'm going to let you guys do on your downtime, and you can fill me in as you go. With that, why don't we take a quick little break and we can figure out how we do this giveaway. And then when we come back, we're going to jump right in. Yay! So don't go nowhere. Please. Two, a three. A crunch. Oh, I forgot. I need to reset. Hold on. I need to reset Tyler's ninja link. I'll put us his picture in the meantime. <laughs> Welcome back, friends. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. It's from the. It's you uh, as, as uh, David Kaplan. Yeah, you're good. Don't worry. You're in there. You're in there. Good shit. I love it. So, Cam, did you want to did you want to give a quick uh, quick talk about the giveaway? All right, ready, set. It's giveaway corner. All right. <laughs> giveaway time. We are going to be giving away this golden arcane chungus dice. And when I tell you it is heavy as shit, it's and metal. <laughs> solid. I actually think it's solid gold, right, Campbell? It's solid gold. <laughs> <laughs> Pay off your wink, wink. with this massive D20. <laughs> yes, this will be the first of we have been gifted like a ton of tremendous dice to give away during this particular campaign by our sponsor, Modern Artifice. In order to enter to win this die, post a photo or screenshot or selfie in which you can see the stream in the photo on Instagram or Twitter and tag us at critical fail DM. I will be spending some time during the stream locating everybody's entries. Those entries close at 945 this evening so that we can announce the winner by the end of the stream. Um, so yeah, a photo with the stream in it, give a little blurb about goon files and tag us at critical fail dm critical f-a-y-l-e dm on instagram or twitter to win this hell yeah so go ahead and get that in now it's the, the best time to get it in is now while we're getting set up here campbell 
<sighs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Campbell, I want you to take us through Daphne Crook waking up. Oh, boy. It's a, it's a we'll say it's a Monday morning. Mm -hmm. And you're waking up. All right. So Daphne is waking up at, in an apartment in Center City, Philadelphia. Like in a nicer area that she would have ever have anticipated herself living in. But that was like a choice. It was like I'm moving out of South Philly. I'm moving into Center City. And she has this nice apartment and like it, it's newly renovated in an older building but it's bare there's no effort put into decorating there's like a fully stocked bar a kitchen table like a tv and a sofa and that's pretty much it and so daphne wakes up like under a nice duvet in her bare apartment and goes and makes coffee standing up in the kitchen and she smokes like three cigarettes for breakfast <laughs> chain smokes three smokes like enjoys like three cigarettes for breakfast what does she and, smoke like, gamble that's such a good question, Ned. I don't know anything about cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm now taking requests in the chat for like. I got it. I got cigarettes. it. She's an FBI agent. She's smoking. She's smoking Marlboro Lights. Okay, great. That's okay. I, I was gonna say Marlboro something. Yeah. All right. So, smoking cigarettes, drinking coffee, two sugars, no cream. Um, and then she is going to hit the road to the FBI field office on Arch Street in okay. Philadelphia. Is she walking or is she driving? I'm going to drive the like 10 blocks, like not even. I'm going to drive and I'm going to park in my designated parking spot. Wow. Gives you an idea of how far she's come. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, and, and while she's driving... She smokes another cigarette. Actually, you know, I should. I'm gonna stop at Wawa on the way over. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm gonna stop at Wawa on the way over. I'm gonna get another coffee because there's something about walking into work with a coffee you bought, a big one, not one from home. It just says something about you. And so yes. I'm gonna stop at Wawa and then I'm gonna drive and park in my deck at designated parking spot and I'm gonna head into the FBI field office on Arch Street. Before Listen you to even Pat get that far on the way over. Before you even get that far. Uh oh. <laughs> you, you walk into this Wawa. Oh god. And as you walk in, you go over to the you know, you're you're going over and you're putting in your order and you're getting your coffee. And as you walk to the register, you look at the woman who's at the register and she just stares at you. Can I help you? She looks to her right and she nods and everybody in the Wawa turns and looks at you. <laughs> and a man from behind the counter walks over to you takes the apron off puts it on the ground and goes Miss Crook there's a Crown Victoria out front we're going to need you to come with us uh okay who the fuck are you can't tell you that alright well I'm going to need to call my partner Stephen Cartwright he already knows uh, can I call him first no can do ma'am all right, what can I fucking pay for the coffee or do I just get that for free? It's on us, man. Lead on. So this guy looks at everybody else and everybody almost like a flash mob goes back to their daily routine. And you and him walk out, get in this Crown Victoria with tinted windows all the way around. And he goes, it's for security, ma'am. And the guy in the front turns around to you in the passenger seat 
and he puts a bag over your head. Absolutely. Gently. Like he doesn't like it's not like he's like strangling you, but he almost like he holds it up and he goes it's for security, miss. Okay, h- hold up. One can you put that can you just put that down for like can you just no, absolutely not. Is this about Eddie Stone? <sighs> Miss, we can't talk about anything in the car. It's not safe. Wherever you're taking me in this city, I'm going to know where we are. Where are we going? I can't tell you that, miss. I can't compromise the location of which where we're taking you. Can you just keep that your hands away from me, though, and I'll drink my coffee and I'll look down in my lap or something because this is not how we're doing this. And the guy in the front seat kind of looks to the guy beside you, and the guy beside you just goes, "Yeah, yeah, that that that'll that'll work." Great. And so I I will just I will just like look down at my car. Do you mind if I smoke in your car? Go right ahead. All right. And the guy who's driving is like, Bob. You know, it's been two weeks. I've quit now. You know, a, a little a little consideration would be nice. And he goes. All right, can you... Do you just want one? No, doc, are you fucking... <laughs> yes, give me one, God damn it! All right, here. Fucking... It's nine o'clock in the morning. Oh. <laughs> God, Jesus Christ. <sighs> oh, it's so fucking worth it. And you guys drive. And you drive, and you drive, and it feels really long. The car pulls up in in Port Richmond mm-hmm. into like this abandoned warehouse, um, and you guys walk in through the front door, and the windows are all blown out in this abandoned warehouse. And you guys are walking through it, and he goes to one of the stone pillars that seems to be supporting this warehouse, and he gives it like this weird, awkward knock pattern, and the stones push inward and open up to an elevator. What the fuck is this? <laughs> and he looks to you and he goes, Miss, I'm just going to need you to come with us. Well, are you from the Bureau? Miss, I can't divulge that to you right now. And he steps into the elevator and he's standing there just arms crossed and he's going after you, Miss. I'm going to try to page Stevie. Okay. And just be like, how do pagers work? <laughs> <laughs> well, shit, I didn't think I'd get this far. Uh, we, we, pro- we, yeah, we probably should know about that. Uh, call in if you know how a pager works. How do pagers work? Can you type words? I think the I think the Venn diagram number. I think yeah, just the number, number shows up. Number. The number, and then the you call, and then the idea being then that they call the number that shows up. All right. Uh. It's up to you, if you, Campbell. If you want to try paging him, you're gonna have to roll for it. I definitely would try to page him. Yeah. Oh, somebody in the oh no, Adam has typed in the chat like Easy Tech. Junkie, how to pager? What is, what a, pager? is a pager? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right. Well, then I'm gonna type in the chat. In the chat, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna page Stevie. Um, I, I'm I assume there's like a bureau SOS. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So here's oh, here's you what can you can also do. send like instead of a phone number, you can send a code. So you could have like an emergency code or like I'm sure numbers, you and you know Stevie what I mean? have developed some sort of code that's under the radar mm-hmm. of of like the FBI um, just for mm-hmm. you two. Here's what I will say. I'm going to need you to give me a stealth roll because you're right in front of three dudes. <laughs> so you have to try to hit your, you know, like I imagine that you're like, oh, really? Like you're shrugging or something and like. Maybe your hands are on your hips. I'm gonna, like I'm gonna pretend to like, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna like futz with my blazer, and I'm gonna go to like reach in my pocket as if I'm like looking for my lighter, and I'm gonna try and just like pull my pager out and and just send a, a, like an SOS to Stevie. 
So go ahead and give me the stealth roll. Okay. And I'm going to roll. I'm going to do a contested roll. Okay. Oh, shit. (laughs) What'd you roll? I rolled a 77. And I have 30 in stealth. Well, I'm actually glad you rolled that because that allows me to talk with the chat about critical failures. Oh, God no. damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so, friends, uh, a little untraditional Delta Green system is critical failures and critical successes. A critical success is double digits of the same number underneath whatever your score is, and a critical failure is double digits divisible by 11 over whatever your score is. So Campbell. Oh, geez. You go to grab this pager to sneakily try to page this message. And as soon as you like move your arm backward, one guy has your arm. The other one has your other arm. And the guy in the elevator rushes you and throws the bag over your head. Jeez, Louise. (laughs) You fade out. Jeez. And like I imagine we just see the camera on the ground level of this. It's like a a fadeaway ground level of this factory building. And it just pans up to the city skyline. Mm -hmm. And we see... File number 266, Operation Shattered Glass. Lights up. Campbell, you're in a sterile room with a two-way mirror, a steel table, and a steel chair. Your feet are handcuffed, not your hands. And there's a pack of your favorite cigarettes and a cup of coffee on the table for you. But there's nobody in the room. All right. <laughs> if if my hands are free, I'm gonna like. I'm gonna I'm gonna just look around first and see if this is an interrogation room that I recognize. Mm-hmm. So you do recognize it to be an interrogation room? You have no idea where it is. Okay. But you know. This is exactly what police departments, what your bureau does. This is the exact type of room they put somebody that they don't want them to know where they are. All right. Are my shackled feet shackled to the floor or to the chair, or they're just shackled together? They're shackled together through a steel ring in the floor. Jeez. So the chair, the chair isn't an issue. Like you could get out of the chair but your feet are bound to the floor. All right. As, as I'm just like observing this, what is it like, like bag off the head. And before I, before the blackness settles and whoever it was that pulled it off is gone. Yeah. So I'm like, and then I'm going to like tug on the, the feet chains a little bit. Like what the fuck? I'm going to, like, fix my hair a little bit, and I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to take the cigarettes, and I'm just, like, looking through the two-way yeah. glass and, like, taking one out and putting it in my mouth and looking through the two-way glass and lighting it and looking through the two-way glass as it, like... Is this supposed to, this is my home turf. Is this supposed to spook me? Awesome. <laughs> and then so good. and then it. I'm gonna go for my pager. Gone. Well, <laughs> in fact, the pager is in the corner on the floor out of your reach, but you can see it. The door swings open. And in walks a man, very much dressed like me, black suit, white shirt, red tie. And he's holding a vanilla envelope with your name on it. And he sits down. Daphne Crook. 
You're born 1961. You're 34 years old. You're 5'7". You weigh 150. Don't even. Don't even finish that sentence. 100. 100. And, yeah. Um, Eddie Stone 9. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, it is. Uh, we've never seen anybody with that capability. And what's furthermore, we've we've never had anybody walk away without a mental breakdown. What, are you, what the fuck are you talking about? You didn't. Okay. What do you know about Eddie Stone? And he sits back, and he something clicks for him. You don't remember seeing it. And he like gets up and he starts pacing. And then he sits back down and he goes, Daphne, that night that you found them there in the schoolhouse, what do you remember being on the chalkboard? Somebody had drawn a pentagram on the chalkboard. Right. See if it was something anybody recognized. Just the pentagram? I need you to think real hard now, Daphne. Do you remember what was on that pentagram? How the fuck do you even know about this? (sighs) What I'm going to show you might be very disturbing. Okay, will you do me a solid? (laughs) Will you throw up on the stream for us the handout that is labeled Daphne's Incursion Point? I sure will. (laughs) This is wild. Daphne. That's not me. That's you. Okay, all right, here we go. as, As he looks at you, he slides a paper in front of you that has this image on it. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, uh-huh. Immediately, when you see that image, you see stuff that happened before you arrived to the Eddie Stone 9. You see them involuntarily, like, going places and, like, sacrificing and, like, eating things that you're not supposed to eat and like doing things that don't make sense and the whole time that they're doing it their eyes are rolling back and they're saying I've seen it I've seen it I've seen the sign I need you to make me a sanity roll (laughs) head off the bat jeez jeez Louise okay I don't know what I'm trying to hit so I'm just gonna roll so you're rolling a D100, you want to get underneath your sanity. All right. I rolled a I rolled a 60. And I have 90 sanity. Great. Great. So you see all this. And the next thing you know is like you're just like gripping the table. And and you're like breathing heavily. And he takes the paper back. He folds it up. And he rips it into like a hundred pieces. And he goes, like I said, we've never had an agent see this sort of stuff and walk away unscathed. That's why you're here. What is that? Daphne, what you just witnessed was the yellow sign. Even saying it to most people sends them into a bout of madness. But you, somehow... I mean, you went in there and you pulled out nine convictions. And you weren't even phased. I was just doing my job. And that's what we like to hear. Let me introduce myself. My name is Jack Porton. 
I'm the head of Delta Green. You've never heard of us. You've never seen us. You don't see us operate. You don't know where we're from or where we're going. But we have one objective, and that is to make sure that shit like that, and he's pointing to the, the torn pieces of paper on the ground, he's like, doesn't go public. If you knew the sort of stuff that's out there, Miss Crook, it makes the Eddystone Nine look like a walk in the park. So, so what? Like, are are me and Stevie going to be working on this now? It's going to be you, and I have three others that I've pulled. We cut two. <laughs> We cut to Teddy inside this room. <laughs> he is handcuffed to the chair by feet and hands. And he is just like. <laughs> I imagine Trevor. The- <laughs> <They're> like- <laughs> Hello. <laughs> now, how do I get myself into this? Oh. <laughs> Cut two. <laughs> Cut two. Oh, shit. Kay, are you living in New York right now? I'm living in Washington, D.C. Great. You're in D.C. Oh, yes. <laughs> You're in DC. <laughs> What's your trip like to work each day? Uh, so today's today's a pretty typical day. Um, a loud alarm goes off on a, <laughs> on a. <laughs> uh, it's on. It's just sitting on a hardwood floor, right next to a mattress, just on the floor, and we just see uh, a wiry arm just reach out and slam it down. <laughs> And a, and a few seconds later, you, we see uh, uh, Diana sort of like pries her head off the pillow, kind of feels around for her glasses, puts them on, looks over at the at the alarm clock and just goes, fuck, and gets up, like grabs, like hurriedly puts on some clothes, walks very quickly down the hallway of her apartment. She has a very small apartment, uh, swings by, like walk, she, it's like a railroad, railroad style apartment. So she walks through the kitchen and just like without stopping just like scoops up a box of Chinese takeout from the night before um, as she grabs the chopsticks and like puts a, <laughs> puts a few, stuffs a few bites into her mouth. She's about to get to the door. She grabs her keys and skids to a stop and goes, Oh shit. Wait, she turns around, runs back uh, to, we now see like the other side of the bedroom with the side that we saw was very, very bare, just a mattress and an alarm clock and just like muscled sheets. Her hair is a mess. She's got her glasses on now though. And we just see like an array of big fat CRT monitors hooked up to like an array of computers underneath a very bare, like a sheet of plywood for a desk. Oh shit. (laughs) But very like a lot of like the room is hot. There's like, you can see the heat waves rising up and going out the window from all these computers and servers and machines and a really nice high back chair. She doesn't sit down quite yet. She She doesn't sit down, but she just sort of like leans over and takes a quick look at this one little window this one little terminal window of just like very fast scrolling green text. She watches it for a second as she's like following it with her finger and goes, Oh God. Fuck. Fuck. She looks at the clock again. Fuck. And sprints out. Um, uh, uh, grabbing her, grabbing her bike in the hallway as she like hurriedly like is like throwing her laptop into a, into a bag and like swinging, slinging her backpack over her shoulder. And just, she gets on her bike outside the door and just pushes off so and rides get, down the street. You get right out the door. You get on the bike and out the door. And as soon as you open the door, two men on either side of you grab you off your bike by the arms. Oh, a van pulls up. The door slides open. And you go right into that van. Hey, I'm biking here. Hand, like, <laughs> hand, <laughs> like hand over the mouth. Like, like into the van and you're gone and nobody sees it. Fuck. Cut, <laughs> cut two. 
We see we see an AC-130 gunship, oh like dropship, flying in to Philadelphia International Airport. And in the back of it, we see a strapped-down Humvee. And we see six or seven groups of guys that are all in military fatigues, but they're coming home. Right. They're like they got their duffel bag and some of them are Marines. Some of them are Army. A couple of them are National Guard. And at the far end, we see a lone guy who's got two like Kevlar cases of just stuff. And he's sitting there and he's a a lot bigger than the rest of them. And he's just hardened. And he just he's just looking down. He's like not looking at anybody, not bothering anybody. And what's even funnier is he's not wearing a seatbelt. And this AC-130 comes in and comes... I don't know if you guys have ever flown on a plane with a military pilot. Like, like if you've ever flown a commercial flight, you know, and, and the pilot used to be Air Force, the landings are not smooth. It's like... <laughs> Like, oh, that was an Air Force pilot, all right, you know. So this plane comes skidding in, and like these Marines and these and these these army men are like jostled up, and David is just sitting there, taking taking the hits of the of the of of the shake. The back of this AC-130 opens up now that they're on the ground. And these Marines and these guys, the Army, they all hustle off. They're moving off. They're moving off. And David just slowly... Well, I don't know. Dave, what, what do you do? Yeah, I just, you know, pick up my, my, my cases and make my way off slow and steady. And so as you're coming off... There is a Crown Victoria on the tarmac. And standing in front of the Crown Victoria is Jack Portman. And he's going, Kaplan, why don't you come with us? Got a special operation for you. And he doesn't even say a word. He just nods and just... Mm. Maybe like sets the suitcases by the trunk yeah. and just gets in. <laughs> that rocks. <laughs> so we come back to Teddy, and Teddy is in this room, and he's and he's and he's handcuffed and, and hello. And as soon Teddy, as you say hello, Jack Portman walks in. Hi, hey, everybody. What do you want? My marrow. My DNA. Let's see it. You ain't getting none of it. <laughs> God damn. Teddy, if we wanted any of your bodily fluids, we would have had them this morning. Gee, good fucking luck, you would. Teddy, you've been, uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, you've been pretty busy. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm an energetic top. Can't quite seem to sit still. How long were you in that bunker? Oh, shit. Well, I did not see the sky until I was four years old. I proceeded to, to live inside of it with six hours of outdoor time, mostly spent in survival training uh, for the following uh, nine years. And then since I've been 16, I mostly looked after myself. Free range, so to speak. And that's when you uh, join the park rangers. Um, park rangers, you know, uh, I'm not so good with people all the time, as you can probably already surmise for yourself. Park ranging, you know, I get spend a lot of time by myself. Seemed a suitable career path for one of my skills and uh, uh, charisma, or lack thereof. Yeah, Agent Jackson said you tried to bite him on the way in. Is that... <laughs> Now, that is an exaggeration. It was a complex maneuver that involved teeth. I don't think that that necessarily means. Of course. Of course. Let's, Teddy, let's get to the heart of the matter here. Well, the fastest way to the heart is, 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 uh, is right through the sternum, so please, by all means. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Tell me about Woody. 
Now, how do you know that name? When was the last time you saw him? Well, if you know his name, I think you already know the last time I saw him. Yeah. In fact, we've been trying to find him ourselves. Maybe now. You see, your uncle uh, actually had quite a few correspondences with us. And who were you? We'll get to that in a moment. He was onto some really serious stuff. He actually helped us find and solve a lot of stuff. He was with you. He, um, I knew it. He was onto something. Are y'all the ones that turned him into that moth monster? Sadly, no. But, um, well, about four days before he went missing, we, um, we sent an agent to try to find them. And, uh, well, we only had one image that was saved from his body cam. This is news to me, mister, so please spill it. Okay, will you please throw up on the stream oh, for us? Shit. Teddy's incursion point, please. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. So, Teddy, Jack pulls out this image, and he puts it in front of you. I'm not positive this is the right one, but I think it's this one. Oh, shit. He pulls it up, and this is what you see. <laughs> nope. Shit. Hold on. Go away. Oh, here we go. Okay. I'm having a bit of trouble making heads nor tails of that, and I have plenty of experience with both. That ain't like nothing I ever seen before. That was see, the last thing my uncle saw. Is that what you're telling me? Oh, Teddy. Teddy, that is your uncle. Roll a sanity check. <laughs> Holy shit! As oh, soon no. as, as, soon oh, as you no. hear that from Jack, all of it makes sense. Like all of all of the things, like you started to see, oh, no. you started to see things in his house that didn't make sense. You started to see like like hairs and follicles that just didn't belong. You, you started to see that he wasn't showing up to things regularly. He was missing his bills. Like, none of it was making sense. Go ahead and give me that sanity roll. Oh, man. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, fuck. Uh... So, suddenly having that racist uncle over to Thanksgiving dinner doesn't seem so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I got an 89. Over? Oh. Over the sanity? Over 80. Fuck. Yeah. Trev. <laughs> yeah. Trevi, I'm going to need you to roll a D6. Shit. One. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> so you see this image, and and like right away, you like you jolt back, and the chair falls over. I knew it. I and knew Jack it. I went out to them like, woods. I didn't see no blood. I didn't see no body. He would have left a sign of something. If, if something had got him, he would have left something behind. I knew it. I knew he wasn't dead. Well, yes. Yes, Teddy. He's he's not dead, but... <sighs> Jesus. You, you got to understand. Your uncle is not who he was anymore. And 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 if there's any semblance of him left... I, I don't know if he's able to be saved. Well, how can you know? You talk to him, you stroll on up there and say, hey, Mr. Mothman, come on over to my lamp. Let's have a friendly conversation. No, I don't think so, sir. That's my uncle you happen to be talking about. So you take your finely tunic suit and your fancy flashy red tie. Why don't you girls go stand out in the field, try and get a bull try to charge you? I'm going to leave this place. I ain't gonna find my uncle if you don't much mind. Thank you very much for your time. That was it was very nice meeting you. I'm gonna go now. <laughs> and he's like, and he's all on the floor, uh, chained to this chair, and he's like trying to get. Out. <laughs> oh no! Right, uh, Teddy, you take all the time you need, but uh... oh, I'm taking it. 
I've had plenty of time. I need more now. Go find my Vanka. You tell me he's this mon- monster. <laughs> what if I told you that we can help you with your uncle, but we're going to need you to help us first? I tell you, you're a liar. You're not as dumb as you look. And Jack Thank gets I up. Have. He gets up and he walks out. Wait, Cut where you to. Go? Get me yeah. out of here. You <laughs> son of a bitch, you don't walk away from me. I swear to God. My- Slam. <laughs> <laughs> we cut to K. Uh-oh. Oh. You find yourself in a room much like um, much like Daphne and Teddy found themselves in, but you're not you're not chained at all. You're not chained at all. And in the corner, in the corner, is a brand new Mac (gasps) sitting there with a keyboard. And this is 95, so it's the old chunky Macs. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) And you see that the lock on the door is connected to that computer. It's like one of those electrical, you know, <laughs> locks. Um, so she's, she's sitting there. She's sitting there, and she's just been looking at this computer. She's staring at it. She just, like, that little blinking terminal window is just, like, calling her. Mm-hmm. And she's got her hands on the table. And she's she's just, like, she has, like, resolve on her face. She's like, nope. Nope, not today. Not today, Diana. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it, Diana. <laughs> you look under the table and like her leg is bouncing. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. She gets up and like <laughs> just in one smooth motion, like boom, you hear the chair <clears throat> squeak back. And she she walks over <laughs> and starts just clacking away at that thing. Um yeah. yeah and and she's gonna see... she's gonna like she's 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 looking at all the wires and she's gonna try and see if she can hack this lock. Hell yeah! Give me a computer. Give me a computer science roll. Okay. Yeah, Shoot! I should have had my D hundreds ready. <laughs> yeah, and like the light, like it's like that. It's like one of those office lights. It like kind of flickers every now and then. Um, that oh, yeah. is uh, where's that score? Computer science. That's a six under sixty. <laughs> right. So. You Jeez, in please. lightning speed. You just like fuck yeah. You've done this before. This yeah. is easy, and it's on a computer that's faster than anything at this point. So you're like, and you just the lock just goes. She so she sits there in front of the computer, and she's like, "Fuck me, that was way." too easy shit shit i shouldn't have done that oh i shouldn't have done that okay the door opens <laughs> <laughs> and, jack, and jack portman walks in and he's listen was that like a was that a test to something i because like that was listen i know my rights here all right i need to i need a phone call i i need to be no one no one said i was under arrest am i being detained am i free to go <laughs> You done? <laughs> oh my god! Am I? <laughs> well, that was the fastest I've seen anybody open a door. And well, I mean, our guys are a- the ones who program that lock. So, well done. Huh? Well, you know, you only Do you, need you only coffee, cigarettes, anything like that. Uh. Yeah, yeah, coffee'd be great. And and listen, you should tell your guys they gotta do more salt rounds. That was only three. Come on. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> and he and he, he walks over to the two way mirror and he knocks on it and he goes, How do you like your coffee? Uh black, two sugars. So he holds it up two and then he goes and he and he like and he does this and then he and then he goes, Oh, and more salt. Jesus. <laughs> he sits down and he goes you know you've got you've got quite the file on you 
Uh, do I? Because I think most of those records are supposed to be sealed. Well, yeah, they were until we got them. But... Well, what the fuck is the point of sealing them if you're just going to open it up? Yeah. Well, you'll be glad to know that um, all those records have been wiped. Courtesy of us. Um, okay. You've got my attention. We've been following you for a while, Diana. Um, I believe uh, Toofy is what you go by, yes? Yes. You and Smudge? Who told you about Smudge? We have a lot of eyes, Diana. A lot of eyes. Well, then you know that he's dead. Yeah. Sorry for your loss. Thank you. I'm actually more interested about a chat that you had with a rogue AI. Do you know anything about this? <laughs> rogue AI? What is this, Blade Runner? I don't think so. <laughs> it's a really good movie. Um, yeah, it's great. <laughs> Takes most people a few tries to get the hang of it, and you got to get the right edition. But once you do, it's good. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm talking about a certain chat you had with a user by the name of No Mask. Yeah, came out of nowhere, right? Mask. Yes. Well, it was uh, chat number 1,533 of yours. Um, just, this looks familiar, right? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. There's only one problem. Um, there was no IP address on their end. What do you mean there was no IP address? That's impossible. I know. We thought the same thing. And what's more, the the capability to redact things via the internet, I, I, its we've never done that. Live encryption as it goes out doesn't make any sense. That was pretty impressive at the time. Yeah. <sighs> the problem is... Uh, what was redacted, Diana. And that's how we knew it was a rogue AI. Later, we tried to search any trace of it. Doesn't exist. Didn't come up. Some of we us are really copy. good at hiding our tracks. I thought I was too. Not this good. It took our hackers about, oh, I don't know, 30 days per word. And when two of them, well, let's just say two of them are no longer with us after they saw what was there. Okay. <gasps> please. You may now look at. <gasps> please, I would like you to first put up Diana Redacted. Ooh, so, okay. that, so that the audience can see what it was that you saw on your end that night. There it is. So that's what came across. Yes. That's what you saw. You were approached by this no mask. It gave you a bunch of information that you needed, that you used. It was your biggest hack yet. And then there was a bunch of redacted info. He puts the new image in front of you. Diana. And now, Diana, I would like for you to put up Diana Incursion Point. There it is. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> um, 
I, uh, I, I, sh- I feel like I should make it known to you and everyone else that I've actually been reading The King in Yellow. So this is a little terrifying. No! <laughs> 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 oh, man. So as we all see, The King in Yellow, uh, somebody was messaging you from Carcosa. That's spooky. Oh, boy. I'm going to need you to roll me that sanity check. No. I'm sure you do. Mm, Caracosa. Oh no, no, it's not good. It's not good. Uh, that's a ninety-three. Oh, oh my god! Hey there, hi there, ho there. Yeah, um, my sanity's sixty. Uh, All right, uh, go ahead and roll me a d six because this is. What if I don't want to roll a d six? <laughs> <laughs> but what if I roll Four. bad? Four. Good. Okay. How does this unfold? Oh boy. You, um, you see, I'll, I'll tell you what you see, and then you tell me how you react. You see images of the yellow sign. You don't even have to see it. The words, have you seen it? As soon as the word yellow sign hits your eyes, the words form into that image we all saw inside of that pentagram. It starts to form before your very eyes, and you can almost hear somebody speaking to you going, Welcome. Welcome. Thanks. Have you seen the yellow sign? And it just like. Um, yeah, yeah. I think uh, much like how uh, Daphne like came to and was like gripping the table. I think Diana comes to but has like fallen backwards over her chair and mm. is like just curled up in the corner of the room. Yeah. And Jack and Jack stands up and he goes, now Diana stay calm. And he has his hand on his gun and he's, he's at the back of the room. He's on the complete opposite side of the room as you almost like he's afraid of you, not the other way around. And he's like, I had to show you that. I was worried about what would happen, but I have to show you what you're messing with. What's out there? What is truly out there? And he, his hand kind of comes off his gun. And at that moment, the door swings open and one of these goons walks in and is like, I got your coffees. <laughs> 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 sorry did i interrupt something <laughs> and jack's just like put them on the table and get the fuck out and he puts them down and he's like fucking son of a bitch and just walks out and the door closes <laughs> black two sugars <laughs> yeah she kind of like tries to shake it off, but she is physically shaking and steps up and like just stands up and like stumbles a little bit and like yeah. boom, sort of falls heavily into one of the chairs and just like chugs the coffee. Yeah. And Jack goes to where the paper slid onto the ground and he takes it and he tears it up piece by piece by piece by piece by piece. Cut two. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going? We 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 are we are going to sweet <laughs> sweet David. David, you are walked in. Like, let me let me get in character here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get in this Crown Victoria, I'm ready, and you're in the front seat. Like, you get it. Jack Portman's driving, and he's talking to you, and he's like, "You don't know who we are." We're an unknown organization, but we work well within the U.S. government. And he's driving, and you recognize, like, you don't recognize really where you're headed, but it's on main roads, so you know that it's probably on the books. 
um, and you're driving and you're driving and the windows are down and like fortunate son is like playing on WMMR, <laughs> right? <laughs> you're like, I, I figure like, I figure, I, I figure David like goes to the radio and he flips it and it's like that. This is Gero Bear on 93.3 WMMR, everything that rocks. And this next one is a good old one from the 70s. We're going to play Fortunate Son by Creedence Clearwater Revival. And it just cuts into like... And like you're driving and like <laughs> David cranks the volume up and Jack is like, no, 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 no. All right. All right. Listen, listen, David, we got to take you to a black site. You, you can't. Yeah. Hold on. This is the best part. Just <laughs> he turns it up. <laughs> 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 and Jack's just driving. Oh, like, shit. It ain't me. It ain't me. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yes. And then Jack, and Jack just kind of looks at the wheel and just smiles. All right. And he drives you, no questions asked. Um, and he drives to that very same building that we saw previously with Daphne and you guys drive in and this time instead of going through the front doors with the elevator you drive around to the back and you park the car and the car is like behind a bunch of buildings like you can't really see it from the street and the car all you feel in the car is and this area of land that you've parked in goes into this underground area where they're where they are the car stops you guys get out and he goes come on i'll show you where we're going to talk and he takes you past three separate double mirrored panes and in each one of these rooms you see a young woman in an FBI outfit. You see a young Latina woman who is visibly shaken. And you see a man who is handcuffed to the floor and is on a chair and is screaming at the top of his lungs at the door. <laughs> and Jack walks to this last kind of room and just kind of pushes the door open and goes, I got to talk with... I'll be there in a second. And he closes it. There's nothing in the room. It's just a chair. There's a couple of smokes on the, on the, on the table, and that's it. Take a seat. Light up a smoke. So, you hear some commotion coming from the other rooms, a clang, some other stuff, and then Jack walks in. Got your file. Sorry, I had to I had to go back and get it. David Benjamin Kaplan, 42 years old. Oh, shit. Are you the grandson? You don't happen to know uh, a Benny Kaplan, do you? The kosher king? Oh, the Lord! <laughs> there you are. Yeah. The Lord! <laughs> That's my pops. Get out of here. That's crazy. I, you know, I, I saw him go nine rounds. That was incredible. The best fight of his, the best fight of his career. He had dynamite in those hands. Yeah, my dad used to say he was, he was swinging bricks. You know, they just don't make them like that anymore. Taught me a thing or two. Yeah. I see that from your file. 132 confirmed kills. It's pretty hefty stuff. You do it. Took you out a second do. in command. Although you were uh 
dishonorably discharged. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. What if I told you that was a setup? How could that have been a setup? Well, allow, allow me to explain with some evidence. You recognize this piece of paper, right? Is that your is that your court martial? Heavily redacted, right? Okay, you can go ahead and put up handout Kaplan redacted, please. So you hold this paper in front of you. A lot of redactions. It's 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 pieces. Pieces of, of really of a of anything. But it it reads to President George Bush from the Office of Naval Intelligence, October eleventh, nineteen ninety. Wow. Sixteen hundred hours. Operation Desert Storm. Assassination of Colonel Said Yusuf Al Qasi and discharge of David Kaplan. Report Sigma One. Seals were dropped in from Halo Drop at 36,000 feet at 300 hours a.m. Both Chief Petty Officer Kaplan and Lieutenant Johnson radioed at 32300, radioed in to affirm they were in position and ready to engage at the time stated that redaction. Two, tactical support was told to stand down. It, redaction, redaction, down the target on their own. Three, at 400 hours, AC-130 gunship, codename Romulus, heavy redaction. At 412, we lost communication with Kaplan and Johnson. Four, redaction. Five, at 440, Kaplan and Johnson radio communications resumed, at which we were informed that Kaplan had taken the shot and confirmed Colonel Saeed Yusuf al Qasi as KIA. Six, Kaplan and Johnson were retrieved via Black Hawk Mustang 2. At 520, debrief took place at 600 hours. Kaplan has been told that his actions were in direct interference with the rules of engagement. He will be court-martialed and summarily discharged from service. His service was a great addition to the SEALs. However, disobeying a direct order, going around command, or performing an offensive action without permission is a dischargeable offense. I mean, Christ's sake. Kaplan, they even redacted who sent the letter. You gave these guys a lot of years of service. Do what you gotta do to serve and protect. God damn it, Kaplan, it just ain't right. We took the liberty of unredacting the information. We think you should see it. You deserve to see it. Okay, would you be so kind yes. as to put up <laughs> Kaplan incursion point, please? As you can see, Kaplan, the redactions are pretty, uh, pretty unfair to you. The main one being that at 400 AC-130 gunship Romulus spotted an unidentified mass moving at roughly 300 miles per hour, moving southwest. This object was immediately triangulated at SATCOM and NASA. Both could not pinpoint or identify the mass. The mass was dispersing an electromagnetic pulse and was disrupting all electromagnetic communications and radar. Second message was sent to Russian headquarters in Moscow. Russia denied involvement in the event. This was backed up with redacted spotting of image on their satellite as well. China was also sent communication and replied with proof of no weaponry in the area of Kuwait. At 4.10, the unidentified object 
encompass the area in which Kaplan and Johnson were operating. At 412, we lost communication with Kaplan and Johnson. You see, Kaplan, they knew. They knew what they saw. And they hung you out to dry, man. Target could not be accounted for. Unidentified object named Dirt Wolf. David, at that point, you flash back to that moment on the battlefield and you see this mass of dust and particles and it looks like a, like a Tasmanian devil. It looks like a tornado going through. <clears throat> And you look to Johnson and Johnson's, you know, Johnson's spotting for you. And Johnson is like, the fuck is that thing, man? Unidentified object. 300 clicks out. Southeast by south by southeast. Southeast. Now it's southeast. Look, look, there. there. Kaplan, it's coming right for us, man. I, I don't know what it is. And as it's coming, it's coming. And now that you've read this, you see inside this dust tornado what looks like limbs and tentacles floating through it. And it's moving and it's coming at you and it's coming at you and you black out. Go ahead and give me a sanity roll. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Oh boy. This is going to be the one time I roll high. <laughs> Oh, that is a uh, twenty-seven. Nice. What's up? <laughs> nice. <laughs> I will say, David, yours was the hardest check to pass. Ooh. Yours. Ooh. You, will, you will take one point of sanity damage. Oh. Had you failed, Shit. it it would have been a D eight. So you did good. Okay. Did very good. Okay. Done good. And I imagine that like you read this and as you're reading it, I don't know, you tell me what what does one point of sanity for you look like? What is what is a recollection of that of that I, I think he's so used to seeing messed up shit that it like maybe just that realization snaps to him and he just kinda like tucks it away. And and moves on. It's like, yep, another fucked up thing. Yeah. So yeah, it's just like a real quick, like you might see him tense up real quick and then like throws it in the back of his head to hopefully never remember again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. Uh. <laughs> so, Jack looks at you, and he looks at your file, and he throws it over his shoulder, and he goes, listen, I've scratched your back, man. I got rid of those files. I showed you what you got. I showed you how you were dicked around. How about you come work for me, and we'll do some real good. Well, that's why I got into this in the first place. And he puts his hand across the table to shake yours. <laughs> it's like it's like that scene from Predator. You son of a bitch! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, that, it's that tight handshake. <laughs> and we cut back to Agent Crook. Oh. And Jack's looking at her and he goes, I got three other people. One of them's already on board. But they need a leader. I need somebody who can point him in the right direction because god damn it one of them's a fucking nutcase <laughs> <laughs> who who <laughs> 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 
listen, you don't want any part of it. I, I get it. You've gotten your big break. You've got that corner office. If you want to keep trudging away with a bunch of men who don't respect you and don't give a shit about what you have to offer, you walk right out those doors, you get back in the Crown Vic, and we'll drop you right off at the front office. Who am I working with here? It's a yes or a no, and then I introduce you. You'll keep bringing the coffee. <laughs> you could you can have all the coffee you want. All right. Yes. He puts his hand across the table. I'll like take out my badge on the table and then reach out and shake his hand and shake his hand. There's something important I need to tell you. Daphne. The stuff you're going to get into. And trust me, I was a lawman at one point. You cannot under any circumstances let your partner know what you're doing. Have you talked to the to the office? Do I need to do anything? Do I need to go on leave or something? What do you want the excuse to be? I got 30 letterheads we can choose from. Just tell them I'm getting ready to go to trial. Truth never hurt anybody. I'm serious about your partner, though. And he, hey. like, leans across the table and he's like, it's for his safety, not yours. Can I talk to him one more time? You can talk to him as much as you want. You just cannot talk about the case. And he's like, he is. You have never seen anybody more fucking serious in their entire life. He is like, he is. You get the sense. You know what? Give me a human human intelligence roll. Oh, oh, rolling shit. All right. Okay, so that's a 45 under 60. You get the sense that this guy has seen what happens to loved ones and people that you care about when they find out what you're doing or they get involved in what you're doing. You get a sense that he has no one left. And so he says it again. He goes, it's for their safety, not yours. Let me get you another pack of smokes. And he walks out. Cut to Teddy. God damn it. I've been sitting here all damn day. You can't keep me in here. It's un-American. Get me out of these goddamn handcuffs. I'll sit here pleasant and polite like all you had to do was ask. You didn't mean to knock me out traveling across. Where the fuck are we anyway? I don't see no smoky hills of West Virginia. I don't see no country roads. Get me the fuck out of here, you son of bitches. I swear to Christ, I will grind you into dust. Then the door swings open. Do you know what Trevor said <laughs> before we started tonight? What? <laughs> Trevor said, <laughs> I'm really going to challenge myself to be the quiet one this campaign. <laughs> we all knew that was a load of horse shit. 
I, I would also like to point out that a few minutes ago in the chat, Stephen626 said, Teddy is just an adult, unchained, modern Pasha. Oh! <laughs> no, I, I see the parallels. They certainly are there. Yeah, that held oh, up for all of man, none that seconds. Is all right. so funny. <laughs> So uh, uh, the door swings open and Jack Portman is standing there and he and he looks at you, Teddy, and he goes, Teddy, 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 Teddy. <laughs> You're killing me, buddy. Listen. <laughs> if you, you take these we- cuffs off me, I'll kill you for real. <laughs> if you think that we are authority, you're wrong. Oh, my God. You got a tie. That's all. You, that reeks of authority. Look at you. All right, you say what you got to say, mister. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, fucking buttons are too tight in the anyway. Jesus Christ. All right, listen, Teddy. I got two people in the other room, all right, that are ready to do what they have to do to take care of this country and every goddamn American in it. Are you going to be that man? You have my word. And he puts out his hand. He goes, you have my word. We will figure out where your uncle is. What is it about me that you need? (sighs) You're fucking weird, Teddy. (laughs) I don't know about... I would use the word eccentric. You have this proclivity to find out these things. Mm-hmm. I've never seen it. I've never seen it in a civilian. <laughs> I mean, we spend years training our agents in the field and out of the field to spot the unnatural. And you, it's its almost like you're a fucking magnet for it. All right. You talk a big game, but I'll help you. But I got two conditions. Man. First, who killed JFK? <laughs> um, put me in a tough spot, Teddy. You know? <laughs> I mean, I mean, really, it's you've already had enough damage done to you for one night. I, I don't. I mean, I'll tell you if you really want to know, but it, it's, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll, well, let's circle back. Say, just, uh, we'll circle back to that one. Write it down on a slip of paper, slip across the table to me like they do in all them movies. All right. <laughs> Can I get a pen? Thanks. <laughs> what else? All right. Number two. Are you on the internet? <laughs> Am I on the internet? Are you all on the internet? Well, personally, no, but... uh, Can you get on the internet? Yes. All right, do some shopping for me. All right, I want the original copy, a nine to five. Now, that's the original cut. All right? All right. She won an Emmy for that, you know, Miss Dolly. (laughs) It's a good goddamn movie. That's cool. Fan fucking taste. Hey, right. uh, yeah. And a guy comes in and he goes, and he like whispers something into his ear. And the guy looks at him and goes, Really? And he goes, Just fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> and, the age, and the agent walks out. <laughs> Oh my god. Teddy, all the happenings of the JFK assassination were not man done. And that should be enough for you to know. So it was a woman? (laughs) (sighs) Dang it, I'm so close. That's what I've been getting wrong this whole time. Gee, you're dumb. And the door opens up and, and the guy comes back in and the guy is holding 
he's holding a copy of nine to five. <laughs> Well, y'all work fast. All right. Let's get it done then. And, yeah! I take it. and, I, and we cut away. <laughs> <laughs> and then we cut to <laughs> Diane. You fucking chaos muppet. Me? <laughs> Me? <laughs> no, Trevor. Oh, Trevor. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, if anybody's a chaos muppet, it, it's fucking Trevor. I'll tell you that. Jeez. <laughs> Fucking God monster. Damn it. <laughs> ah! He goes from nine to five. <laughs> the JFK oh, assassination. My God. And then I have to keep up with it. <laughs> you did great. Wow. You really did. Wow. <laughs> really good job. <laughs> All right. So we cut back to Diana. Oh, oh goodness. <laughs> Boy. Ooh, okay. I didn't go. Anywhere nearly as I thought it would go. Um, we cut back to Diana, and and Jack uh, is like, we've gotten to a point where where Diana is like sitting in the chair, and she's drinking the coffee, and Jack is like squatted beside the chair, and he's just like, t- like gently rubbing her leg, like, hey, it's all right, you know, it's like just. You know, would it would it help if I told you the first time I saw something like that? Uh, you know, <sighs> sparing on the details, but sure. It's 1983. Um, I was working a CIA job. And um, I I brought a folder home, you know, secret, secret clearance. I didn't think anything of it. I, I didn't think it was, you know, anything too bad. Um, so I left it out on the counter. And, you know, your, uh, your significant others, they get nosy, right? And they like to look through stuff and... Uh, You know, we don't talk about it. We never talked about it at the CIA or, and they don't talk about it at the bureau either, but you know, secret clearance is, is nothing. Well, let's just say somebody mislabeled it. It should have been top secret. And, um, and the info in that document, it, it unlocked something. It unlocked something. Um, But, you know, I came back into the other room and um, let's just say that Let's just say I'm uh, I'm on my own now. So, I get it. It doesn't. It doesn't get any 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 less terrifying. But after a certain amount of time, you, you kind of adapt to it, if that makes sense. The trauma, I mean, some things you see and, and uh, it's, it's always horrifying, but the pain gets a little less worse, if that makes sense. I mean, not a lot, but more than anything else I've fucking seen today. Yeah. My my guys weren't too rough with you, were they? When they when they brought you here, I told them that they, they I told them not to make a scene or anything, just to get it 
you know, over and done with, you know, because it was broad daylight. We had to make it fast, but. I mean, it was a little abrupt. Yeah. All right. Look, what, what am I doing here? What do you guys need from me? I got three I'm already people. doing my time. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, actually, is your time. I want to give you your freedom back. Okay, what's in it for you? Work on this job. I got three other people waiting to meet you. Three people. I got to handle something in Philadelphia. You join them. You help them do that. I'll do you one better. I'll expunge that file right now in front of you on that computer. And I'll trust you to help them. How's that for a bargain? It's pretty good. I think I'm going to need one more favor, though. Name it. I want you to get me back in touch with No Mask. <laughs> you know, Diana, if you had asked me for anything else. What do you want from him? It. Whatever it is. No mask can do in the blink of an eye what I have been trying to do my entire life. And what's that? Justice for smudge. Give me some time. Let me try to find a way to make the connection secure. All right. You're no good to me if you're fucking nuts. Ten salt round encryption, bare minimum. All right, hold on. And he pulls like he pulls a pen out and he's like, he like pulls your file. And almost like it's trash, he like turns it over and he's like, fucking 10 salt round. Salt rounds. Yeah. Is that it? It's a start. All right. All right. All right. Hey, Mike, get in here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the guy comes like, comes running in. And he goes, what? And he goes, and the guy looks at it and he goes, that much? And he goes, yes. <laughs> and Mike like runs out and goes and does Hey, it. Mike. Yeah? Later on, we can talk about virtual machines. And uh, what operating system are you guys using? Uh, well, we, ju we just got 95. Oh, God help you. All right. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Listen, we're working with what we got, okay? We'll talk. All right. Then he walks out. So what do you say, Diana? What do you need me to do? Come with me. So he stands up, he opens the door, and he brings you guys into this room with a table like a wooden table almost like a conference room like a like a like a like a government conference room you know it's like a like a wood table and some padded chairs and there's water and coffee and cigarettes on the table and he walks in and he sits at the head of it and each one of you is brought in with an agent the agent sits you down and leaves
Diana? Meet the team. <laughs> Teddy? David? The other woman? <laughs> <laughs> I'm blanking. <laughs> Daphne, Daphne, <laughs> Daphne, and David are getting lost in my mind. All right, <laughs> wipe that. So we got we, we got a lot of D names. Like last time, we had all yeah. names that ended in E, and now we yeah. have all D names. <laughs> Diana, I want you to meet Daphne Crook, David Kaplan, Teddy Booker. Oh uh, what? <laughs> hey, that God one. Damn it. <laughs> hey, uh, Diana Raballo. All right. Uh, Special Agent Daphne Crook. You can call me Dave. David's a little uh, little soft-spoken. He's an ex-Navy SEAL. What's your name, name Cowboy? My name is Theodore Booker. You can call me Teddy. Teddy is a uh, uh, still active, though. I don't know why. Still active park ranger. Uh, yeah. Confident member of the United States Parks Department. Don't you worry. All those pretty vistas I keep safe. Yeah. That and he's a um, he's a master on cryptids. And the other. They're out there. Yes, Teddy. And he pats him on the knee. We know. <laughs> <laughs> and Diana, for your information, everyone, is probably the most ex experienced hacker in this country. That I that is very impressive. Thanks. All right. So do we do we get to make like uh, final calls to our loved ones or are you just going to put it back over her head and we're going to go to mission number two? I I mean, on the contrary, I, I never said you couldn't call your loved ones. However, Diana, as I told Daphne. Nope. Oh, switch almost. Em. <laughs> switch them. <laughs> Did I switch? <laughs> Wait, no, that makes no. sense. You might be right. I got it right. You're probably right. <laughs> Get the mic. Get the mic. Get the script. Get the fucking script. Um, however, Daphne, as I said before, and I'll say to every one of you, under no circumstances do you share with the people important to you what you are working on. Not in writing, not in code, not over the phone, not in person. We're in the secret business then. You're in the business of keeping them safe. From what? And who's them? From what? Each one of you today was witness to a unspeakable event. Something that you couldn't quite understand, right? Something you had no recollection of. Something you, you didn't see before. Something that didn't make sense. Daphne, you had no recollection of what was inside that pentagram. Diana, that redacted text you couldn't see, but once you did, it horrified you. David, an entire segment of your report kept out? And Teddy. The image of your uncle. In the flesh, what you suspected. Or the fuzz, so to speak. Mm. <laughs> Be aware. There are things that go bump in the fucking night. 
Our job is to muffle the sound of that bump. And that is where we will end session. (laughs) Thank you all for joining us. I I am so happy with how that went. I hope you all had fun. Oh, so much. Around the horn. Is everybody excited? Is everybody having a good time? Yeah, let's do this thing. (laughs) Oh, yay. Congrats. uh, Sound off in the chat and everyone give applause for Nedley's first time in the big chair. (laughs) But more importantly, hold the phone. Campbell, do we have the results? You bet your sweet bippy we do. Hey! Big congratulations to Rachel Steiner. Yay! We are going to be reaching out to Rachel, whose post came from Twitter, I believe. We will be seeking you out on Twitter. If you're there in the chat, sound off, and you will be receiving the arcane gold chungus die. Oh, my God. Look at our chat. They are so awesome. Every one of them is congratulating Listen. The chat was fabulous tonight. That was yeah, awesome. Yeah, thanks for hanging out with us, everybody. This is a lot of fun. Y'all were great tonight. Okay. <laughs> and I know that yeah. we, we ran pretty long. I, I have been... I, I love that I said I was going to keep it at two hours, and we're looking at three hours, so... We know um, how we do. We know how yeah. we do. Yeah, <laughs> but so... Uh, for those of you who are new, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are Critical Fail DM, um, and we are the goons, and we do all sorts of great, great fun stuff. Um, I'm your handler, Ned. Uh, the critical fail DM himself is down there. That's Trevor. And then our other members who are also so, so important. We have Tyler and Campbell and Kay and, uh, and we are so happy to be here and we love doing this for you guys and, and gals and, and everybody in between. And, and we're so excited. So please keep coming back Monday nights at 8 PM Eastern standard time. This is our newest show. We're going to have a lot of fun with it. It's going to get spooky. <laughs> Does anybody have anything else to add? Would anybody like to say any any last words before we uh, before we sign off for the evening? I think that's Great it. Great job, Ned. Great, Great job, job, Ned. Ned. And, and giddy up, Yay. y'all. It's going to be a root good root time. Root time. <laughs> totally true. And in the famous words of both <laughs> in, in the famous words of both K and Trevor, I'll see if I can try to try to combine these two. Take your evening and your sanity rolls with advantage. Hey. <laughs> Good night all. Love you guys. <laughs> <laughs>